Hi everyone, welcome to my Facebook Live this week. My name's Mandy Witherby from Mandy's Papercraft Creations and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. How are you all today? Okay, so Facebook has changed with business pages. So I'm just going to click on this. No, that's all good. Okay, we don't want that. All right, I'm just checking that everything is good. And hopefully I'm here in my business page because I'm actually going to call up this live right now just to double check. I'm going to look that up on my iPad just to double check I am where I'm meant to be. <laughs> Hi, Tina Marie. I was just saying Facebook has changed business pages. So I have been navigating that over the weekend and it's been getting very confusing. All right, I think I'm in the right place. All good. So yes, so there's this new thing with Facebook that you can um, do something with changes to your business page or something. And so now every time I go in, I have to make sure that I'm under the correct profile, under my business profile, not under my personal profile. But some things can only be viewed under my personal profile and it's very overwhelming and confusing. So I'm navigating all of that. <laughs> Hi, Amanda, how are you going? So great to be here today. Um, I'm having one of those days actually. I think it's the weather. I'm just, I feel really exhausted today and just got up this morning and didn't feel like doing much at all. And I think it's just the weather getting to me because I'm not unwell, I'm, apart from a bung wrist. I have a bung wrist again. Um, it was settling down, it flared up again. So I think I've tweaked it again. Um, Hi Fee, how are you going? Hi Renee, great to have you here today. Um, yeah, so last week, interestingly, last week after my Facebook Live, my um, wrist was sore. Well, actually, it's not my wrist, it's sort of at the base of my thumb joint. Um, so it's kind of been affecting my thumb and my first finger, but I haven't had the strength in my hand that I normally have. Oh, hi Athena. Oh, you're doing a sneaky. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, and when I finished my Facebook Live last week, it was really painful. Oh, it was sort of a bit tender. And then the next morning I woke up and I could hardly move my hand. I'm like, oh my goodness, what have I done? I think it's just, I just sprained something um, in the base of my thumb there. And it was settling down and all good. And then I woke up this morning and thought, oh gee, that's sore again. So I must have tweaked it, lifting something or... Yeah, I haven't got the strength, so I can't sort of lift the kettle or lift anything in that hand, or if I try to open something with that hand. So today's live could be quite interesting because <laughs> my wrist is sore, or my hand is sore. Um, I did get Amber to do a little bit of die cutting for me beforehand, so I've got less die cutting to do. Um, but we'll see how we go as we go along. Great to have you all here. Um, the humidity, I don't know, Tina Marie, I, it's, it's a new thing. Normally when I have issues, I do get RSI in my wrist, but it's in a different spot. It's in a different joint actually in my wrist normally. This time it's actually in my thumb, like the base of my thumb. So it's kind of, it's like down, down in this joint down here this time. Normally my issue is over further in my wrist. So I don't have one that wraps around my thumb. So I thought, well, I'll just put this one on. And this sort of restricts my movement a little bit. And it will remind me to be careful as well. So... See how we go. <laughs> it might be interesting. <laughs> if nothing else, we can just have a lovely chat, can't we? No, I have got a project planned. Haven't got it pre-made, but um, we're going to do a little bit of a mashup today. Um, I so I was going to do a birthday card. I have a friend who is turning forty tomorrow, and I was going to make her a card. And then I thought, you know what? We've got Easter coming up in what about a week and a half? or just under two weeks. So I thought, you know what? I haven't done any Easter cards yet. I need to do some Easter cards. So we're gonna make an Easter card today. Um, no worries, Tina Marie, see you when you get back. Yeah, so we're gonna do an Easter card today. And um, so this will be my first one this year that I've made. So I'm a little bit behind the eight ball on the Easter cards. So I need to get my act together. <laughs> um, all right, so let me give you a little bit of news before we go on with that. The first thing is, most importantly, now you know that over the last few weeks, I've been talking a lot about the um, Butterfly Brilliance 
or the butterfly bouquet product so we've got our beautiful um, stamp set and dies and this is only one sheet of the dies the other sheet of the dies is in there as well so um, for those of you that may not have seen it I'll just pull that out so this is the brilliant wings dies which coordinates so we've got the beautiful detailed dies there and then we've also got the large dies that cuts out um, the stamp set so that's one large stamp and then the dies cut out the whole thing all at once but it cuts out the butterflies individually which is awesome and then you've got these details as well and then there's a few additional um, butterflies in there and there's another die cut detail and the little brick one and this one this is really cool this sort of um sort of cuts but embosses in your cardstock it's really cool detail so I made a card with that a couple of weeks ago on my live but the important thing is the designer series paper is already on low inventory and when this goes it's not coming back so be sure I'm just separating the patterns for you so you can see them so if you love this paper and you haven't already built, bought it go straight away and order it because otherwise you're gonna miss out um, it's, the paper isn't carrying over into the annual catalog however the stamp set and dies is um, so this paper is going to be gone very very soon so when things are running out they get put onto low inventory and I'm just trying to this is one side of the papers so beautiful look at all those beautiful butterflies in all those pretty pretty colors and then the other side you've got those patterns there one two three four five that's not all of them there's another one hiding in there oh there it is Hiding. It's hard to, I didn't take them out of the pack, packet to um, separate them all earlier, but you kind of get the gist. Oh, now they're all out of the packet. Okay, there we go. Let me just get them all organized. I'm a little bit disorganized today, I have to say. Um, well, I have to admit, I should say. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's been just one of those days. I just sort of feel a bit, not unwell, but just like, yeah. The weather, you know, bad weather blues or something. <laughs> Not that I'm blue. I just, I'm tired. I just want to go back to bed today. That's the other side of those beautiful papers. But yeah, this is my favorite side with all the pretty butterflies. So yes, so go and grab those. Um, even grab yourself a couple of packs of them if you love them so much. I did. I had, um, I purchased two packets of these. So I've still got plenty to um, play with for quite some time, which is awesome. I'm very happy that I did that. Hey, Julie, great to see you. Um, yes, and also too, we've got the beautiful Natural Touch um, Designer Series paper. This one isn't on low inventory yet, but again, this one is only while stocks last. Sorry, still got it in the plastic. Um, comes in 12 by 12 sheets, this one. Sorry for the noise. And this one has got, um, it's like a birch look paper and it's got added texture in it as well. So when you feel it, you can actually feel the texture in it. So um, yeah, that one's only while supplies last as well. So not sure how much longer that one will be around either. So I just wanted to point that out to you because you don't want to miss out on those. Hi Kathleen, great to have you here. Alrighty, so I'll pop those to the side. So watch out for those. Now, what else was there? Um, yes, there's quite a few other things that are on low inventory at the moment. Some things are on back order. Um, let me just move these over. And there was a few that I wanted to point out to you. Sorry, I'm so funny, isn't it? This morning I was really cold and I put on my warm clothes. I had a long sleeve shirt on. I had my tracksuit pants, had socks with my slippers. And I was sitting here preparing for today and I thought, oh my goodness, I have to go and get changed. I'm too hot. <laughs> so it's um, a, bit of a, a bit of a funny old day. Hi, Angie. Great to have you here. All right. So um, a few other things. So you will know um, I spoke about this last week and I did post about it during the week as well. Um, 
we have a new annual catalogue coming out on the 4th of May. So as demonstrators, we'll be able to start ordering from that catalogue on the 1st of April, which is very exciting. And we actually get to see a PDF of the, of the um, I was going to say of the video, a PDF of the catalogue. We get to see that this week on Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday in Australia. So that's really exciting. It's one of the perks of being a demonstrator is we get to see the products early. But in saying that, so a lot of the, also on Thursday, we will get a list of the retiring items. So we'll know what things are going to be leaving and which things are going to be carrying over into the new annual catalogue. Um, in saying that, one of the things that will definitely be going will be the um, one of the in colours. So it'll be the, um, if you have your annual catalogue, so that's this one here. If you have your big annual catalogue, on page 143, you'll see the in colours there. Now the in colours stay around for two years and then they cycle. So um, we always have two sets of in colours so that there's a, a year overlap kind of thing. Um, and then the older ones will go and then a new one will come in. And then the following year, the same thing happens. So our um, 2019 to 2021 in colours are going to be leaving us. And these are such pretty colours. I love these. This is one of my favourite in colours we've had actually since... I've been with Stampin' Up. Um, so we've got Rococo Rose. Actually, let me pull them out for you. We've got Rococo Rose. So that one's going. We've got Terracotta Tile. Oh, that's hard to get to. That's behind my stand here. Terracotta Tile is going. Should have had these all pulled out for you already, shouldn't I? I told you I was disorganised today. <laughs> we've got Pretty Peacock. This one's really beautiful. Oh, they're all beautiful. Uh, seaside spray which no I didn't have that one out I thought I had that one out to use today that one is really light um, like a purpley blue really beautiful and then purple posy now I've still got the original purple posy ink pad but those of you that have been around Stampin' Up for a while will know that there was an issue with the original purple posy um, ink pad with the color not remaining stable over time so Stampin' Up had to pull the ink pad though I still kept mine I actually haven't been using it but I do use the um, Stampin' Write marker and I use the cardstock so all of these colors are in the ink pads oh, except the purple posy isn't in the ink pad um, but the other colors are with the ink refills uh, the purple posy is available in the Stampin' Write marker and all those colours are available also in the cardstock. So if you don't have them yet, make sure you get them because they are going. And once they go, um, you won't be able to get them at all. Oh, hey, Danielle. Great to have you here. Um, yeah, so, so far we've got on low inventory, which means there's only minimal amount of stock left. And once they go... Um, that's it, they'll be gone. So we've got the Seaside Spray Classic Stampin' Pad. Oh, Seaside Spray, actually Seaside Spray, sorry, I wrote that down. Seaside Spray is not one of the in colors. I don't know why I wrote that one down. That was a bit of a boo-boo, but it is on low inventory. But that one will come back because that one's a color that's um, carrying over. Um, so Terracotta Tile is already on low inventory. Um, and Purple Posy cardstock and Pretty Peacock cardstock is also on low inventory. So some of those in colours are already going. Um, interestingly, another thing that's on low inventory at the moment is the blending brushes. Now the blending brushes, um, we're assuming, will be returning, um, carrying over. Hopefully, we'll find that out this week. They should be. Um, they were in the mini catalogue, but I'm pretty sure they've been a, such a popular colouring tool that I'm pretty sure they'll be carrying over. Um, but don't hold me to that. We will definitely find out on Thursday for sure. But um, yeah, they are on low inventory. So if you needed them in the near future for any projects coming up, grab them because if they do um, go on back order, we don't know when the supplies will be available. So um, yeah, so just grab those. And the other thing that was interesting when I went um, to check what was on low inventory today 
was what we're going to be using today actually for our class. So the Arrange a Wreath Bundle, which is, I'm going to try and hold, hang on, I'm just going to pop this back in the packet because I think these dies are going to fall. Are they going to fall off? Or maybe I can hold them carefully. So this is the Wreath Builder dies. We're going to be using them today. Sorry, some of them keep falling off. And they coordinate with the Arrange a Wreath stamp set. We're going to be using those today to create our Easter card, but they're actually on low inventory and I didn't realize until I checked just before I went live today. So thankfully they are still available if anybody likes what I make today and would like to um, get them. But yeah, they're on low inventory. So um, if you do want them, then perhaps get them earlier rather than later. <laughs> Um, yeah, I hope that the blending brushes will as well, Angie. I really think that they will because they've been such a popular tool. Um, but yeah, we'll find out for sure on Thursday anyway, so that'll be good. All right, so let me just see down here. I'm just having a look to see if I have missed any of the comments um, while I've been chatting. Do, 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 do. Where are we? They are going quickly, Angie. Yes, they definitely are. Yeah, I haven't seen you for a while, Danielle. It's great to have you back watching. Um, yeah, so the in colors will be gone really soon. So grab them while you can. Um, and that was the main news that I wanted to share with you today was just about the in colors and the um, Butterfly Bijou paper, that beautiful paper. Um, make sure you don't miss out on that because it's absolutely gorgeous. And um, yeah, it would be sad if you were holding off to get that paper and then missed out. So yeah, so grab that. All right, now let me just move these to the side. Oh, what am I talking about? Seaside Spray, it is an in color. Oh my goodness, I'm getting mixed up with soft sea foam. So yes, Seaside Spray is on low inventory as well. I'm so sorry. See, my brain is just foggy today. <laughs> oh dear. It's gonna be a really interesting live today, I think. <laughs> I think I might need all of your help more today than I have recently. <laughs> Hi, Glenda. Yes, I am well. Just having one of those days, you know. I was saying to everyone, I have a bung wrist. That's the only thing. But apart from that, I'm fine. I'm just having one of those days. <laughs> um, the treat boxes are a great one to carry over. I use them to put items in, Angie says. Yeah, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they carry over as well. So I can't wait till Thursday and we can see all of those items that are retiring and then we'll know what is carrying over. So Thursday will be a really busy day because what I do is I pull out my catalogs or maybe I'll do it over Thursday, Friday or maybe Thursday, Friday and the weekend. We'll see. Um, but I pull out my catalogs and I go through and I mark every item that is retiring in my current catalogs and then that gives me an idea of what's carrying over then um, and I know what I've got to work with and then I start sorting out all of my let me go that way <laughs> see all of my shelves so I start marking all of my stamp sets that are retiring and my dies and all of all of the um, embellishments and ribbons and it's a big job um, Amber helps me with all of that, so it's really good that I have a helper. So, um, oh, let me tell you too, I have um, I have coming up, I just put the um, advertisement last night up for the upcoming event. My upcoming class is going to be on the 10th of April, or my next class is on the 10th of April, and we're going to be using the Hydrangea Hill products. Now, let me show you those in the mini catalog so pretty I can't wait I've had these products the hydrangea hill products for a while and I haven't actually had a play with them yet so I'm really looking forward to this class so this is them here beautiful I love the colors and this one holds a lot of memories for me too because I grew up with hydrangeas growing in our garden when I was a kid and I have a lot of um Happy childhood memories of playing around where the hydrangeas were and picking the hydrangeas to um, put in vases inside and 
um, things like that. And of course, my mum loved purple. And um, those of you know uh, that have been following me for a while know that I lost my mum just over 12 months ago. And so anything that reminds me of mum, um, you know, I love. So I love this especially. And, um, and butterflies, anything with butterflies as well, because mum loved butterflies. So purple and butterflies, you've got me. <laughs> so yeah, so that's my next class that we're going to be doing is um, creating some projects, not these projects that are in the catalogue, but some different projects using these beautiful products. So have a look in my event section here on my business page when I finish my live today um, and have a look there. And um, I'd love for you to register for that class. Uh, that would be awesome. Now, if you already have those products, but you would still like to do the class, there is an opportunity to um, substitute those products. So there's information about how you do that in that event. So if you go in there um, and there's different links that you click on for the different options for the class. Um, so yeah, so go there and have a look at that. Okay, let's move on. Let me get all of this together. And... So we're going to be playing with some pastel colours and the builder, I keep calling it builder wreath, not builder wreath, wreath dies um, and also the arranger wreath stamp set. So I've got a few things I've pre-done and we're going to be having a look in the catalogue. So oh, let me turn the camera down to my desktop and then what I'll do is I'll show you um, oh, Angie says her dad used to grow them. Oh, and show them, really? Wow. Oh, he must have had beautiful blooms. Oh, that's beautiful. That's very special. Awesome. Um, yeah, so I'll tip the camera down to the desktop and then I'll show you what we're going to be doing, um, where I've made a start and what my ideas are. I had a little bit of a look on Pinterest as well to see what was on there to get some ideas. Um, and I wasn't, I was actually looking for actual wreaths, not other people's cards as such, like, but actual wreaths to see what the wreaths themselves that people have made, like the, the physical wreath, um, just to, to give me some ideas and inspiration. So using a few different ideas to get all these ideas in my head and, and we're going to mash them all up today and, and see what we come up with. Um, but yeah, all right. So let me get my camera ready to tip down and we will um, get started. All right. So if you've got any questions as I'm going along, please pop them in the comments and um, I can answer them for you. All right. Now let me just cover up this camera. And I'll flip those cameras. There we go. And I'll get this ready. So just bear with me for a moment. Okay, tighten everything up. Oh, there we go. I think my the cover on my camera just fell off. Sorry, everybody, if you're feeling a little bit seasick now as I move everything. <laughs> okay, so I'm hoping that my holder holds everything. The other day when I was filming um, a class for my technique club, everything kept moving because I didn't have my clamps done up tight enough. So hopefully everything's all good today. Alrighty, so we'll just get that all lined up. And then I can show you what I have for you today. Move that over just a tad more. You might see a few little splatters. Don't think that I'm using dirty paper. Well, I am actually. But this is because I was preparing before we went live and I was doing a little bit of splattering with my ink. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of blue tack underneath the corners of my grid paper to hold that in place so that... Um, we have a nice stable surface to work with. Okay, so um, I'm just going to tilt that slightly. Not quite straight. Need to have it straight. Otherwise, it will annoy me if it's not straight. <laughs> okay, all right. So of our annual catalogue, so this is the annual catalogue. Um, on page 127, you will find the arranger wreath 
um, stamp set. Now also too, uh, you can purchase the Arranger Wreath stamp set with the dies and there's just a small image up here of the dies but you can actually purchase them together as a bundle and you save 10% if you do that. If you purchase them individually then um, you know it's a more expensive way to do them. So if you love them, oh hey Tracy, great to see you. Great to have you along with us today. Um, yeah, so if you are interested in these be sure to purchase them together as a bundle because you do save money that way and you can just use one code and you'll find that code here on page 127 the code for that I'll just read it out for you because you might not be able to see it too clearly there it's 154109 and that's for the stamp set and the coordinating dies so that's what we're going to be using today. I was having a look at the projects that are here as inspiration because I sort of thought, um, you know, as I said, I felt a bit disorganized today and a little bit of brain fog today. And I thought, you know what, I could just copy, I could just do a case card and just copy something that's from the catalog. And then I thought, oh, maybe I could do a mashup of those. But then I've got all these other ideas in my head. So we'll see where we end up. Okay, so we've got some guidelines here in case we get stuck, but otherwise it might end up being my own project anyway. So we'll see how we go. I'll leave the catalog open at that page and let me show you what I have got so far. So I also thought that I might bring in, so I'm using pastel colors. Oh my goodness. Oh, I just picked that up the wrong way and all my paper fell out. Um, I brought in the In Good Taste Designer Series paper as well for some wood background. Now, as you can see, whoops, as you can see, I've been using this. This is one of our favorite designer series papers, um, Amber's and mine. And so we've used a lot of this already. And you can see all my pieces are all chopped up. But I really wanted to have some wood look um, pieces and I was wondering if I could incorporate a cross. So I used, I actually used an old retired um, die set, which is the Cross of Hope um, framelit dies. This one retired a while ago, but some people might still have it in their stash. If you don't have it in your stash, because it's a cross, if you would like to use a cross, you can easily just draw that onto the back of your designer series paper and then just hand cut it. Um, so yeah, because it's straight lines, like it's pretty easy to design a cross. Um, or you might have an electronic machine that you could cut a cross out with. So I've got two different sizes. I've got this large one and then I've got a really small one and I've got the outline of the small one. So I'm not sure if I'll even use them yet, but I die cut them beforehand just in case. Um, as I said, these dies aren't available anymore and I generally do not use retired products in my Facebook Lives or in any of my business um, posts. But as I said, some of you might still have these. I don't think we have any current dies that have a cross in them. From memory but correct me if I'm wrong if you know of any current die sets that we have that have a cross in them let me know because um, I'd love to let everybody else know too let me just pick up this paper off the floor all right otherwise I'm going to roll my rolly chair over the top of it so yes so I brought in some paper and I also thought I might use some of that wood look paper for the background as well so I've pulled that out let's pop that over that side out of the way and got my catalog over there so I've got all my embellishments out ready okay so that's that now with the stamp set so that's the stamp set and with the dies this is a really big die set actually so this is uh, let's see how many pieces there's 21 dies in this die set so that is a lot of dies in this um, in this die set. And if in case you didn't know, at the bottom of each of the Stampin' Up dies, it's it's in quite small writing, but you'll see how many dies are actually in the set, and it actually gives you the dimensions as well. Um, so yeah, I'm not actually to be honest with the dimensions. I'm not sure if that's the dimensions of the whole sheet of dies or if it's actually the largest die. Let's have a look and see. 
six and three quarters inches. Six and three quarters. Oh, it's the size of the um, packet actually by six and a half. Yeah, pretty sure it's the size of the, the actual piece that has all of the dies on it. So yeah, um, now the good thing with these dies is that you can create wreaths for all different occasions. Um, and with the stamp set, you've got uh, greetings there for all different sorts of things. So you've got Happy Heart Day. So if you wanted to do something for Valentine's Day, um, Thanksgiving, Easter, best wishes. So you can do something for birthdays and Christmas as well. And you've got a pear, a partridge in the pear tree and you've got the pears there. So you've got Easter eggs, hearts, and then you've got some leaves. Um, this one here I did, I stamped prior to going live. And so it stamps, I stamped this off. This was, um, what colour did I use? I used crumb cake. No, I didn't. Did I use crumb cake? Yes, I think I used crumb cake. And I stamped it off and then... Um, stamp second generation to give like that wood look background for the greeting so i'm trying going to try and incorporate that into my project as well the first one i wasn't happy with because i had a bit of dust on my or a bit of lint on my stamp um, and that always shows up with solid image stamps so i cleaned it and then had another go so i've got a couple there to play with um, and with the dies so you've got this die here and I got Amber to die cut one of those in um, shimmer, shimmery white cardstock. I'm not sure, you probably won't see the shimmer on the um, on the video or on the camera but yeah it, it's got that sparkle to it with the shimmery white. So I've got that one, I was hoping to incorporate that and then the leaf um, die here, the leaf wreath I've got that cut out in both pear pizzazz and granny apple green and I thought I might lay them over the top of each other and just turn them a little bit so that they're staggered. Um, so that's kind of going to be my my starting point, I think. And then I was going to try and incorporate this. Not sure how. Oh, yeah, like that. There we go. <laughs> so that looks good. Um, also, too, what you can do, I saw um, Rachel Tessman. If any of you follow Rachel Tessman from the USA, if you don't, you should follow Rachel. She's amazing. She's so creative and she's such a beautiful person. Um, I saw her making something with this um, today, actually. Well, I don't know when she put up the video, but I, I just saw the video today. And she cut... Um, no, not this one, but you could do it with this one too. She cut this leaf one apart and segmented those um, leaves because we used to have a leaf punch which retired a while ago um, and it was a fantastic leaf punch. I was really disappointed when it retired but you can actually use this in place of that leaf because it was sort of a, a three leaf punch, similar shape to these ones. Um, these ones have just got a little bit of embossing detail in them which is beautiful. But yeah, you can actually snip these apart and use them separately which I thought was a great idea. I hadn't actually thought to do that with these ones. But you could also do that with these ones too. But with this one, there is an individual one as well. If I can get it off, these are really sticky. I haven't put these ones onto my magnetic sheets yet. But yeah, so there's one of those little, I don't know, what would you call them? Like a little blossom? Um, uh, doo -doo -doo. The number is on the back of the dies. Oh yes, thanks, um, Angie. I didn't mention that actually. So, well, yes, I mentioned that the number is on the back of the die, but what I also didn't mention is the ordering code is also on the dies and also on your stamp set. It's down in the bottom right-hand corner. It's also on the back of all your ink pads, bottom right-hand corner. So if you want to reorder anything or if you want to know a code of something really quickly, you can just look on your product because all your products have the codes printed on them, which is awesome. Um... But again, this code here is just for the dies. This code is just for the stamp set, not for the bundle. For the, If you want to get them both together as a bundle, you need to get the code out of the catalogue, okay, or off the website. Um, 
yeah so you've got that little one you've got all these flowers as well you've got dies here that die cut um each of the elements here the only one that doesn't have a die is the wood background but that's easy to cut out because it's just a rectangle um, but all of these other ones have dies um, and yeah and you've got all these other little pieces you've even got a little bow here there's a different type of bow there um, yeah so anyway so that's what we're going to be playing with okay the colors I have pulled out are Highland Heather. I'll just move my crosses to the side. So I've got Highland Heather. I've got Blushing Bride, Balmy Blue, Daffodil Delight, and then I've got Granny Apple Green. And I also did one of the um, wreaths in Pear Pizzazz as well. But these are the colours that I pulled out to do the Easter eggs in. So we've got those pretty pastel colours and our greenery will be in these. I've then brought out some neutrals as well, um, which I'll talk about as we go along when we're going to use them. But I thought, yeah, the Easter eggs would look beautiful in these. So I got Amber to die cut some of the eggs and then I did some stamping of the um, stamped ones just to play with a few colours. And so we've got some eggs and I did some splattering on some of them too, which I really like. So I love the splattered look because you know sometimes when you get um, eggs, hopefully you can see the splatter there. I'll show you the difference. Um, when you get, especially when you're buying Easter eggs, some of the Easter eggs have the splatter on them. Um, but even in nature, like some of the eggs actually have splatter on them, like the little blue eggs often have splatter on them. So I just used, to create the splatter, I used, um, actually I started out with my Stampin' Write marker, wasn't happy with the effect I was getting with that. So then I moved to using my Basic Grey Ink Refill and a um, water painter. And so that's what I used to create the, um, the splatter. So I'll show you how to do that. Uh, yeah, so and then I stamped some as well. I did some first generation, then I did some stamped off. So I've got a whole collection of different um, images to go on with. So, oh, you like the speckle ones, Tina Marie? Yeah, they're really cute. I really like the speckles. Um, so, yeah, so let's start. I'm thinking to begin with, all right, so we'll put all of our Easter eggs over to the side. Oops. And I did like how this looked when I put this together. So I've got the um, shimmery white, um, I don't know what you would call that, blossom? I don't know if it's a blossom. What would you call that? What do you think you would call that? I'm not quite sure. I might bring in my silicon craft sheet. We can start putting these together. Um, so yeah, so I thought I'd have that one on the bottom and then I'll have the brighter colour. So this is the granny apple green on top of that. Then on top of that one, I put the lighter pear pizzazz. So I'm going to stagger that so that they're not laying exactly on top of each other because I want the leaves of the granny apple green to show through. So if I do something like that, then what? I might be able to do is actually pop through some of those little blossom pieces and pop them through to the front so that they're kind of sitting out in front you can see them and they're not just all hidden so we might do a little bit of that as well so let's adhere those together oh look I haven't even got my adhesives out this is how disorganized I am today oh my goodness <laughs> oh dear thankfully I have them all within reach so it's all good all right, I'm going to use some multi-purpose liquid glue and we will pop all of these together. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue onto, actually we'll do it this way. I'll put it on the back of here. Now, as I was going to say to you, if you are looking for any of these products in my online store, just go to my blog, which is mandyspapercraftcreations.blogspot.com um, and there you'll see a shop button at the top of my page if you just click on there that'll take you through to my online store 
Now, if you purchase over $50, I will send you a thank you gift for shopping with me and also, of course, a handmade card. So be sure to use my um, host code when you are shopping with me. And this is my current host code here till the end of the month. So SSFH4EBJ. Now you will see that on my um, blog as well. So don't worry about trying to remember it from my video. Um, you'll see it there on my blog. So just use that when you're shopping with me and then I'll be able to send you a lovely thank you gift. All right, so there we go. So we've got that one adhered down. And now let's do the next one. I'll put this one on top. Now, I, as I said to you, I have got a bit of a sore wrist today, wrist slash hand today, and even squeezing this glue is actually hurting. Um, but, but I'm going to keep going. Um, so, yeah, so this is why I die cut these ones earlier rather than normally when I do, when I make anything on my lives, I, you know, die cut everything live with you all but I did get Amber to help me to do some of this ahead of time just to save my wrist a little bit while I was creating with you all today. So there we go. So there we go, we've got those three colors together. All right, so now I'll just give them a bit of a press together and I want to pop through some of these white blossoms I'm calling them blossoms I don't know what you would call them has anyone got a word for these what you would call them but I'm gonna pop through some of these to the front so that we can see them and probably not all of them just some um, trying to find another one now that I can bring to the front this one perhaps that I'm gonna go through there we go. Oh, I think we need another one over here, actually. All right. Oh, this one. Come on, little one. Oh, that one's actually attached. I can't bring that one through. I could bring maybe that piece of it through. There we go. There we go. So now you can see a bit more of that white one from behind, which um, is great. So with our little eggs, let me just show you what I did with those. Um, so as I said, I used the, I'll just move that over. I used the um, flower wreath die and I cut two of those, one in um, pear pizzazz, one in granny apple green cardstock. Then I cut, Oh, actually, I didn't. Amber did for me. One of these blossom ones in the shimmer white cardstock. And then we've got to try and fit them back on here. This is why I want to get these onto magnetic sheets. Um, then there's the egg die. So you've got the egg die. It cuts two eggs at a time. And we cut those in. I just pulled out actually all my scraps today to use up some of those scraps because it's such a tiny die. I'm just going to pull those out and show you. So here's some of my scraps. Let's pop that to the side so I don't lose it. So I have got, um, I actually brought out So Saffron cardstock rather than the Daffodil Delight. I used the Daffodil Delight ink when I was stamping the eggs, but the ones that I just die cut, I just used the So Saffron because it was a little bit softer. And then I did bring in um, Highland Heather and Purple Posy, but with the other colours, I just felt that the Purple Posy was a little bit washed out, so I went with the Highland Heather. Then I've got some Balmy Blue, and somewhere here I've got some Blushing Bride. And so I just used all my scraps which it's a great way, like I keep all of my scraps in um, plastic bags and then, yeah, I can use them for little projects like this that just need a little piece. So that's what I did with those. All right. So, yeah, so just die cut a couple of those and then let me show you how I created the splatter. So I'll just pop my dies back on my die sheet so I don't lose them. 
So with the splatter, I'll just grab another piece of grid paper so that I don't make too much of a mess. And I basically just had, you could probably do more than one at a time actually. Let's see, let's see if we can do all four of them together. So I've got my Highland Heather, my Blushing Bride, Balmy Blue and So Saffron. I then used my basic grey ink pad, but I didn't use the ink pad as such. I just used the well part and I dropped a couple of drops of my re income into the lid there that you can see just um, pooling there. Let me put that to the side. Then I just picked up my um, water painter. Now when I used this at first, the tip was quite dry. You don't want too much um, liquid at your tip when you're doing this. So make sure it's quite dry. And if it doesn't feel dry enough, maybe just grab a tissue as I just did. Grab a tissue and just dry that off a little bit because we don't want too much water in that tip. And then you can pick up the color and then you can pick up any other utensil, like you can, I mean, any, any, not utensil, any other tool, like you can use another stamp and write marker. I used my paintbrush before, and you're basically just going to tap. You've got to make sure you've got enough ink on your tip though, so that it, you've got quite a bit of ink there. And you're just going to tap that ink. Be sure to have your surface covered you're going to just tap that ink off onto your piece and just keep picking that up. Keep picking up that ink. And that creates your speckled eggs. And you can make them as speckly as you like. There you go. So yes, it is a little bit messy. So be sure just to protect your work surface before you do that. And then to clean the tip of that, you can just, then you give us uh, squeeze to get the water to flow through to the tip to clean that ink off and this one actually I have to squeeze it with my other hand get that water flowing and then you just keep brushing that backwards and forwards until your brush tip becomes um, clean once the water starts flowing through this one's being a bit stubborn today and also too I like to use a baby wipe just to give it a final clean and then I test it on scrap paper to make sure that it's um, all clean ready to go for the next one. Now this one's not fully clean yet but it will take me a little bit of time to do that so I'll do that later on. Okie dokie. Oops there goes my glue dots. Okay so we've got our splattered eggs now you could use a combination of splattered eggs and plain eggs if you wanted to, totally up to you. Um, but I thought I would just use those. Now I was wondering about incorporating some of my um, stamped eggs as well. I haven't die cut these ones out yet, but I'm gonna just see how much space I'm going to have first because I really don't think there's gonna be a lot of space because um, it's only a very small wreath so I'm not sure how many we're going to fit in here and I might like to tuck some of them in to the wreath and remembering too that I've got to fit still my sentiment and also to I wanted to put some ribbon so you could just tuck these in like this is the part I hadn't yet planned which you can probably tell <laughs> hadn't yet planned how I was going to do this part yet but I do know that I want to use some ribbon so I was thinking about perhaps using some of the um, the gorgeous grape um, sheer ribbon this one is from the Highland Heather uh, sorry High. Highland Heather. This one is from the, wait, um, Hydrangea Hill. That's the one, the Hydrangea Hill um, suite. Oh my goodness. And so I thought that I might use some of this on the wreath as well. 
So let me just see if I tie some of this ready and then I can work out the positioning of everything. And I want the ends to be fairly long. So we'll just trim some of that. Trim the ends up. There we go. That one's a little bit too long. In fact, you know what I did? I went the wrong angle with that one, didn't I? Why do I always do that? Always do the wrong angle. That's better. Whoops, a bit more of an angle on that one needed. Make them even-ish. Even-ish. And then we've got a nice ribbon. And I like using the sheer ribbon. Another one that would be good would be the crinkle seam binding ribbon as well. Um, that's a really nice soft ribbon and you've got that crinkle um, effect in the ribbon as well. Oh my goodness, I'm not doing this at the right angle, am I? No, I did have it right the first time. Now my ribbon ends are getting shorter. <laughs> that's all right. I've got plenty more of this ribbon if I need it. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah, and the, with the crinkle seam binding ribbon as well, because it's a white ribbon, you can actually colour it as well. So if you don't have this one, but you have the white one, or you might have, um, probably for this wreath, you would want a ribbon that is fairly um, narrow. Hey, Megan, how are you going? Yes, we are safe. We're um, far enough away and we're high enough from the um, flooded areas. So hopefully you are as well. And I meant to actually say that. Um, oh, hey, Jenny, I just saw that you're on as well. Yes, we're fine. Um, thank you very much. We do have a um, creek near us. It's called South Creek, but it's um, a little bit lower down from where we are. And it's in flood at the moment too. Um, it's at the bottom of our estate, but it doesn't come up this high. And we're quite a fair way up. So um yeah, we're pretty safe from that. And the Nepean River that's been on the news is a long way from us, although it's it's only about 10 minutes, but it's um far enough away. Yeah, so we are all good. Thank you very much, everybody. And hopefully everybody else is safe too. I meant to mention that at the beginning of my live, but um, yeah, with my foggy head today, I forgot. So I do hope that everybody is safe. Um. Oh, you clean yours on your chamois. That's a good idea too, Angie, to clean your um, water brush on your chamois. I should have done that too, shouldn't I? That's a good idea because you can do that and then you can bring the um, one side of it over and draw it along the... Yeah, that's a great idea to clean it on your chamois. Thanks, Angie. Uh, yeah, so hopefully everybody else is okay too. How is everybody going? Let me know how you're going with all this flood. Um, you're high up as well, Megan. Great. So you'll be fine as well. Awesome. That's good to hear. Yeah. Um, let me just see if there were any other comments back further that I missed. No, I think I got everybody. So that's good. Shout out if I've missed you, if um, it's not on purpose by any means but um yeah when i get crafting sometimes i miss i do miss comments so i'm deciding still how i'm going to do this i like this purple ribbon that's really pretty but i'm just deciding on how i'm going to do my eggs if i'm going to do them at the side or maybe i could do a cluster of eggs at the bottom not really decided and then once i've created my wreath then i'm going to go ahead and create the rest of my card but so just having a little bit of a play at the moment to see what we come up with. So if you've got any other suggestions, let me know because we are just having a little play today. And I'm just going to have a look to see. Oh. So just having a look in the catalogue. In the catalogue, they incorporated some of the flowers as well from the dies because we've got some of these little flowers here. So that would be cute too. There's smaller ones and larger ones. The larger ones would probably be a little bit large with the um, eggs though. But the little ones could be nice. So we might even bring in some of those. We'll see. We'll see how we go. 
Um, what colour am I up to now? Yellow, I think. I'm up to doing a yellow one next. And then a blue one. I think we need one up here somewhere, don't we? There, yeah, something sort of like that is what I'm thinking. And then a bow on this side. Now I've got the sentiment as well. Um, oh, how is baby coping with all the rain? Oh, good question actually, Megan. I'm waiting for Kmart to get some more raincoats in stock. <laughs> yes, definitely need raincoats. Um, so it's been really difficult with the puppy actually and all this rain. Um, so we had to buy a um, inside one of those fake grass um, doggy toilets or like puppy toilets. We call it like the puppy potty um, for her to use in the laundry because the rain has been so persistent that it's really hard just to take her out in it. Um, I try and take her out at least a couple of times a day to still toilet out on the grass because we don't want, she was doing so well with her toilet training out on the grass. We don't want her to lose that. Um, but it's also really hard to keep her under the umbrella. Like I walk with her with the umbrella over her, but it's really hard because she moves so quickly. And then um, also too, um, she likes to, once she gets out there, like she likes to run around. Evenings are really hard. We try not to take her out in the evening when it's raining because we get a lot of slugs and snails and um, the slugs are really dangerous for her and we don't want her to get sick. She's had enough already, enough going on already. So... Yeah, it, it's actually made it really difficult um, with the puppy. Even though we've got the fenced off area for her out there, it has made it a little bit challenging. So we are doing our best. So we're doing a combination of puppy potty and outside, but trying to um, yeah, limit the amount of outside at the moment, which she's finding really hard because she loves to be outside. Uh, but she gets so wet as well and she looks like a little drowned rat and then she doesn't like us drying her so <laughs> oh. Um. oh you're cutting up cardstock for cards as with as with um as i'm filming angie that's great fantastic um Oh, and Megan said, all oh, good, Angie. She was grocery shopping and just got home. Ah, cool. All right, so this is what I'm thinking, something like this. However, I could turn it this way and I'd have to reposition the eggs a little bit though, but have it sort of in this orientation. Stick that egg there somewhere. And I could put the happy Easter and the bow at the top, perhaps, and have that coming down that way. I don't know. I kind of liked it on the side, though. What does everyone think? At the bottom or at the side? That kind of hides it a bit, too, doesn't it? Yeah, I think I like it better at the side. Happy Easter. Oh, I didn't bring in my cross. So my big cross might be a bit too big. Let's see. My big cross could be too big. Uh, let's see. Might not be. Might be all right, actually. And then we could put that one at a bit of an angle. We still want to see the detail of the cross, though. Or we could have the cross over this way, sort of at an angle like that. And then the purple ribbon there. Hmm. Let's turn that around a little bit that way just fiddling here to see actually we can take that off the silicon craft sheet now because I just had that on there while it was gluing and we'll probably be able to see it a bit clearer on the grid paper actually and I lost a pink I lost a pink um, Easter egg there that pink Easter egg belongs in there somewhere Somewhere in there. We could put the Happy Easter there at the side. And then the purple ribbon 
below the Happy Easter. All the purple ribbon could go on the cross as well. Or we could drape the purple ribbon. We could actually drape the ribbon instead of having a bow. I could drape the purple ribbon over the cross because you often see that on at Easter. That is because purple back in the ancient times was considered a um, colour of royalty. And so being that we're celebrating um, Jesus and him dying on the cross for us, that is um, appropriate. So maybe we could do something like that. What do you think? Um, yeah, you like it on the side, Megan? Yeah, I like it on the side too. Um, oh, Julie loves this design. Awesome. Um, Megan says, it's the same here. Owls are just pains and refuse to go out in a drop of water. Oh, to get a drop of water on them. Oh, your puppies, yes. At night, we have to have them on a leash as with cane toads. Oh, yes. That would be worse. Well, actually, we've got some, well, probably not as bad as cane toads, but we've got some um, toad stools that are coming up in the other parts of the lawn where she's not allowed to go at the moment. And so even more reason to have her in a um, sectioned off area to keep her away from those. And I'm keeping a close eye on the area where she is to be sure that um, no toadstools come up there as well. I think that cro the big cross looks good in the middle. What do you think? Because without it, it looks a little bit bare, doesn't it? Or I've got this little cross. Could sort of put that in further, put the little cross on there and then still have the purple ribbon below there. I think I like the big cross. What does everyone think? I like the big cross. Um, oh yes, drape it, Tina said. All right, let me get some more ribbon and I'll try draping it. Um, <laughs> Tina Marie said, this is going to be the most beautiful Easter card she's ever seen. Oh, thank you. I hope so. I hope it turns out nice. Um, oh, you've got a, a friend, a lady asking for a 30th birthday card. Awesome, Angie. That's great. Um, you like the big cross, Megan? Yeah, I think that one looks better, hey? I think so too. Yeah. As I was saying, the crosses that I've got here are from a retired die set that I kept um, after it retired. But crosses are easy just to um, fussy cut yourself because it's all straight lines. So just draw one on a piece of paper first if you want to create a cross. And then um, just hand cut it with scissors. Or you could use your um, di uh, your trimmer. Yeah. All right. So something like that. All right. Good. So now you like that one now. Hey, Fee. Thank you. Um, I can't remember if I said hello to you before, Fee. Okay. Yes. Purple is a colour for Easter and the Lent season. Yes, that's right. The big cross looks beautiful. Thank you. All right, so I was going to try, instead of the bow, although I do like the bow, I was going to try draping the ribbon over the cross to see how that looked instead. It's very sheer ribbon, so I'm not sure if you'll see it well enough, this one. I'd need to tape it down too because it's so soft, it's not going to want to sit. I took that away let's take that away drape this oh this is this is tricky it doesn't want to doesn't want to stay I have to do it like that somehow get that to sit somehow oh this is being difficult like that and had that draped down there and then had the happy Easter there at the side.
Yeah, we could do that. And have the Happy Easter in there. All right, so my next question is a card base color. What color card base should I have? Because I think I need a soft color for the card base or a neutral. I had a neutral out. Um, and then we're going to add some more wood. I'm not sure if that's going to stay. Megan likes the bow. Um, Tina Marie likes the draping of the ribbon. Hold it with a glue dot. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, Tina Marie. All right. So let's... Okay, so we've got our colours. Let's work out what colour card base we're going to put this on and if we're going to do it on the wood. I have got... Um, where's that wood paper I had out? So I've got a few colours of the wood paper. Actually, this one would look good maybe in lighter colour. How would that look on there? Oh, it might be a bit dark actually. I think we're going to lose it. Maybe we do need to have it onto a lighter colour. Yeah, I think we're going to lose it, aren't we? We're going to need to have it on a lighter colour. I haven't glued my eggs in yet either, so let me don't let me forget. Actually, let's see it on a darker colour, just to see how that would look. We'll lose the cross then, I think, on that colour. So that, that does make the eggs stand out more and the wreath, but um, we lose the cross then. So I think we're going to need to have a colour in the background rather than just... We could do a texture. Okay. Um, we could just put it on white. We could actually put it on a square of white, although we've got that white at the base, which we'll lose if we put it on white. What else can we put it on? Could we put it on... Oh, we could put it on Purple Posy because we didn't use the Purple Posy. <gasps> oh, we could put it on... Pers okay, let's get some more Purple Posy. Oh, yes. I like that. Yes, I agree, Tina Marie. If we use the wood background, we'll lose the cross. Yep. Oh, vanilla would be a good idea too, Megan. Um, what do you think about the purple posy? I think that looks pretty because, again, bringing in the purple, which is, as, um, as Julie said, is the colour for Easter. Yep, I think I like that with the background. Because it's not quite white and it's not, you know, but it's a so nice soft colour that you don't lose any of the elements. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's use that. And I think I'm not going to use any of the stamped eggs that I did. Um, I think I'm just going to use the die cut ones. I think I just like the die cut ones rather than the stamped ones. Yeah. Yeah, purple posy, Megan says. Yeah. Good. It's unanimous. I think everybody likes the purple posy. All right. And then do we just have it on a white base or do we have it on a natural base? I did. I have got here somewhere a crumb cake base, I think. I did pull one out. Where did I put it now? I've got so much cardstock on my desk. It's hard to find anything right this minute. Where did I put that? I did pull it out. Or actually, you know what? What would it look like on the Granny Apple Green base? Because, you know, green and purple look nice together. Let me just go and find... Oh, I don't know. I had a cut piece. I had actually a card base. There it is. I knew I wasn't going crazy. I had a piece already cut for a card base of crumb cake because I thought with the wood look that might go nicely. Let's see. And then what we could perhaps do, if we have that on there, then perhaps we can put that onto some Highland Heather. 
notes or some gorgeous grape. We could bring in some gorgeous grape to match. Yeah, we'll get some gorgeous grape to match with the ribbon. Um, don't like the green? Yeah, no, I don't like the green either. When I put it there, I was like, ooh. Oh, did my camera slip? Oh, my. Thanks for letting me know, Tina. My, um, I'll just take that back up a bit. My clamps have been playing up. And maybe it's because my wrist is sore too. I haven't been able to do them up as tight. Is that better? Sorry about all the bumping. Is that better? I can move this up a little bit higher. There we go. Is that better? All right, I'll just go get some purple posy. Bear with me. Some purple posy. The purple posy might look nice under there. I'll just highlight that. Just lift that. Oh, sorry, gorgeous grape. Might look nice under the purple posy just to lift that up off the base. Could even do that down a bit more. There, how about that? Yeah, that will look nice, won't it? And so we could just then put that in the middle of the card or we could actually create a square on the front of the card. Ooh, okay. Let me cut a card front piece with the gorgeous grape. Let's move that over. I'll bring in my trimmer. Um, oh, Jenny said, yes, that's better. Megan said, perfect. Tina Marie said, much better. You can emboss the purple. Yes, that's a great idea, Jenny. I might do that. All right, so this one I'm going to cut at 14.2 by 9.9. .9. So let's go 9.9. .9. By 14.2, uh, 14.12. Now that should give me a three millimeter border on the front there. Yep, great. And then, so that's gorgeous grape. And then this one's the purple posy. So this one I'm going to cut at 9.5 by 13.8. So 9.5, 13.8. I'm actually going to do it at 13.85. There we go. Um, Julie said, maybe if you want to keep the wood effect going, emboss the purple posy with the wood grain embossing folder. Yeah, that's a good idea. Either that or subtle. Yep, there we go. So that's our that's our matte layers done. Cool. All right, so then we'll just emboss this one. Hey, so let me bring in some of my embossing folders and have a look and see. Um, pop that one to the side. All right, let's see what we have. brought my whole trolley over all right so we've got not that one well we've got the painted textures uh, oops. we have got the wood grain so the wood grain could look good too as Julie suggested um, what else have we got scripty no Subtle was the other one I was thinking of, which would look good. Oh, you know what else might look good? Is the old world paper, because it'll look sort of, you know, uh, distressed. There is also the Tasteful Textile Embossing Folder. We've got the brick, but I don't think the brick really goes because we've got we're more focusing on wood. So I don't know that the brick would really go. Um, there is the hammered metal. Not sure how that one would look. Um, 
Yeah, I think they'd be the best ones. Not sure about the hammered metal. I like the textured one. All right, so these are the ones that we've got to choose from. Let me just move that over. So we've got painted texture. Let's see how many see how many uh, votes we get for these ones. Painted texture, pine wood planks, subtle, old world, or tasteful textile. Not sure if the textile one is the one to go with because it's more about the wood look rather than and the natural. I mean, tasteful textile is more fabric look. Um, too many choices, Megan. Okay, so let me take away the tasteful textile. Okay, does that help? Jenny said subtle. Yeah, I was thinking of subtle and Kathleen thinks planks. Uh, Glenda said painted texture. Pinewood planks, subtle. Yep, okay, so these two seem to be the most popular ones. Somebody did say the painted texture. Who was that? Glenda. Pinewood planks, subtle. So we've got more subtle. Okay, all right, I'll put these other ones away. So either subtle or planks. Let's have a look and see how fine are the planks. So the planks are fairly wide on that. Fairly wide. But we could give it a go and see. Planks. Julie likes the planks. Um, subtle. Amber says subtle. Subtle. Subtle too close to texture, Kathleen says. Subtle, subtle to too close to the texture in the cross. Maybe, but it's in a different colour, so I don't know. Well, you know what? We could do one of each and see. Because what I don't use now, I'll use in something else anyway. If you use the subtle, I found the other day I had to use the base plate and the clear plate on top. Oh, thanks, Fee. Um... Uh, yeah, because it's a dynamic textured impressions embossing folder. It's the old style. It's not one of the new 3D folders. That will be why, Fee. Yeah. The folder was too thick. Yeah, they're thicker, those ones. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, now I don't know which one because we've got so many different. So what have we got? One subtle, one planks. Oh, whoops. Two planks, two subtles, three subtles, four subtles, five subtles. Wait, three planks? I'm having a look on your comments to count them up. How many planks have we got? One, two, three, four. Oh, it's pretty close actually. All right. Let's do the planks first. That is my note from something. Oh, Pinewood Planks, Dynamic Textured Embossing Folder, Base Plate, Embossing Folder, and Clear Plate. Yep, that'll be the same with the other one as well. All right. So let's just pop that to the side. I'll bring in my embossing, my stamp and cut and emboss machine. Um, Megan says, I've used the subtle and run it both ways. Oh, okay. All right, so we will just use base plate number one. I'll pop that over this side. Base plate number one, and then the folder. We'll take our cardstock and make sure we want the planks to run down the cardstock. So we have to put this in sideways. Actually, I'm going to turn it over so that I can use the. In case I think I might have pointed this out before. Um, there's a straight line on the bottom of the front of the folder. You can use that to line up your, um, I'll turn it that way. You can actually use that to line up your cardstock to make sure you've got your cardstock straight in your folder. So I'm just going to flip mine over and use that line to make sure my cardstock is nice and straight. 
With some of the embossing folders, it doesn't matter so much, but this one, because it's got straight lines with the um, wood grain effect, oh, that moved, it does kind of matter. You don't want to have crooked um, wood grain on your cardstock. There we go. Okay, and let's stay put. Yes, I think so. And a clear plate. Let me grab a clear plate. Where's my other clear plate? There it is. Found it. So let's see how we go. All right, so when you're feeding through your embossing folders, always make sure you've got that folded edge of your embossing folder going through first. Otherwise, you could damage your um, plates. I'm just going to stand up and crank that through with my other hand. Okay, so that's our wood plank. Let's check that one first before we do the next one. All right, that came out nice. All right, let's have a look and see. So we've got our wood plank on there. And often too, you'll find, depending on the embossing folder and how much detail is in it, when you cut your cardstock down first and then emboss it, um, you will find that it will sh give you a bit of shrinkage on your cardstock depending on the design as to which way it will shrink. This one hasn't caused too much shrinkage actually. I've still got a fairly even border. So that's worked out okay. So let's see. Oh, I actually do like that. Turn that around a little bit. Sorry, I stopped talking then for a moment. I was concentrating. <laughs> I do like that wood look actually. I think that looks I think that was a good choice. Yeah, what do you think about that? I do like that. Um Oh Kathleen said it looks great. Yeah, I actually like the wood grain. Did you want to see the subtle as well? Jenny's not sure. She said, hmm, all right, we'll do a subtle one as well. I'll grab another piece of the um, purple posy and we'll cut a piece. Oh, Glenda likes it. She said it looks good. So I'll just need to cut another piece of the purple posy. We might even end up changing the base yet sure oh Julie said she loves that oh good all right let's see so let's go 14.85 keep that one for a card base and this one we will cut in half at 10.5 and that just creates a card front size and then this one I'll cut down to this card front size that we need, which is 9.5. Now, the other thing is too, just so you know, 9.5 by 13.85. Um, if you uh, emboss your cardstock and then you want to trim it, depending on the detail on your cardstock or, or the detail in your embossing folder, um, because it... Um, breaks down the fibers a little bit of your cardstock when you then go to cut it after being embossed it can cause it to get a little bit shaggy so just be wary of that um, if you are wanting to trim oh hi Alison great to have you here ah oh, thank you we're still deciding on the embossed piece which embossing folder we're going to use we're going to try the um, subtle now and see how we like that one um, yeah, so just be aware that if you are um, wanting to die cut your cardstock after embossing, just be aware that it might cause it to go a little bit shaggy. All right, I'll bring over this machine. Pop our plate in. Again, I've got the folded edge going in my machine first. And we'll pop a 
clear plate on top for this one because this is one of the old style embossing folders. It's not one of the 3D ones. Okay. Okay, there's our subtle. Just popping all my plates back with my machine because otherwise they're going to get buried in paper and I won't be able to find them again later. <laughs> Okay. All right, so let's swap this out. Take the wood off and put the subtle on and just see how that one looks. Turn that around a little bit. There we go. Oops, good to do our. Now I didn't show you how I stamped that, but pretty easy. Like the, the base was the stamp, it was this stamp here. So I just, um, I used crumb cake ink. I stamped it off first onto scrap paper and then stamped it onto um, basic white cardstock uh, so that it was a little bit more muted in color. And then I just stamped the sentiment in early espresso. Have that there and then have the ribbon there like that okay and then that's the subtle oh I think I like the wood plank better it gives more detail ah you like them now both now Jenny <laughs> um yeah I think I'm gonna go with the wood look actually because I think it gives a bit more detail the subtle is very subtle in the background in fact, you know what? I was just thinking what we could do is run another piece of ribbon just across the bottom there to finish it off. That might look nice. But yeah, I think I am going to go with that wood plank. I think I liked that better. So good choice, everybody. But thank you all for your... Yeah, either of them would have looked nice. But I think personally, I prefer the wood look. The wood look panel. Yeah. Yes, I think I like that one. Awesome, cool. And then, yeah, might run just a piece of ribbon just across the bottom there to just finish that off um, because otherwise we've got all that blank space there. Unless we just move that down, could move it down into the middle. All right, let's adhere these two pieces together. We'll do that first and then that will give us a little bit less movement so that we've we can, um, it's better than plain. Oh, you like that? Yeah, okay, great, Jenny, thanks. Oh, you don't like that, Kathleen, with that extra piece put at the bottom? Or you don't like the wood plank embossing folder? Which one was it that you didn't like, Kathleen? Julie likes the wood plank one. Um, also see what a purple posy or Highland Heather card base looks like. Or even Daffodil Delight or Balmy Blue. Sorry, lots of choices. <laughs> All good. I like to have lots of choices. All right, yeah, we'll have a look at other um, choices of colour for the base. And we'll see. We'll just put these two colours together because I know that I'm going to have these two together. We've decided on that. Now, with your embossing folders, of course... You have two sides, so you can choose which side you use. Whether or not you use the debossed side or the embossed side is totally up to you. Um, on this particular one, this time, I'm going to use the embossed side. So that's the side where the image is actually raised. But the wood look would also look great with um, the debossed side as well. Totally up to you which side you prefer to use. So this one is the... Let me give you the right name for it. The Pinewood Planks 3D Embossing Folder. I'm actually using the old one, which was the Dynamic Textured Impressions Embossing Folder. 
Now they're just called 3D embossing folder. But I've had my one for quite a while, so mine's the old, um, the old style version. There we go. Great. Good, good, good. All right, so I think now we also need to adhere our eggs because we know that we're going to do that. So I'll just put a bit of glue on each of those eggs and adhere them. I'm happy with their placement. They're so cute, those little splattered eggs. And I love the colours. I love pastel colours. So pretty. Let's move my ribbon out of the way. I'm going to use a little bit of um, my multi-purpose liquid glue. Um, Oh, you don't like subtles, Kathleen. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Amber said a white card base might help to break up the colours. Yeah, okay. I'll have a look at that. So I'm just going to pop. Now, you could just pop glue dots under here. That would also work. But I'm just going to pop a little bit of Tombow under there just to hold these in place. And I've got my silicon craft sheet underneath me as well, just so that I don't get any glue on my desktop. Let's turn that around. Love my silicon craft sheet. It is multi-purpose. Did you know that you can also use it for um, doing um, reverse stamped imaging? Or reverse stamping, I should say. Or the, as we call it, the reflection technique. We've done that um, in one of my technique clubs, actually. Just popping a little bit of glue here and there. Not adding any dimensionals to these ones because um, we've got a lot of dimension already happening in the um, vines or in the wreath itself. I'm just going to turn that egg the opposite direction. I think I had it in a slightly wrong orientation there. Pop some glue under there. My squeaky chair. Can you all hear my squeaky chair? Every time I move, it squeaks. It's actually not the chair. It's the chair pad or the, um, the lumbar support pad that I've got on my chair. I really have to get a new chair. It was one of my... It was one of the things I was going to do when I left my job and I was going to be doing Stampin' Up! full time was to buy myself a new chair. But I kind of haven't got to that yet. I will though, eventually. Eventually I'll get there. There we go. So we've got all our little eggies secured in there. So they're pretty cute. Now we've got to secure our cross. We've got to work out the positioning of that with our Happy Easter. We could have the Happy Easter across the top or just tucked in behind. Might be nice to have that tucked in oops hang on a minute i've got to turn that a little bit because i'm covering up that yellow egg there we go we want to be able to see our little yellow egg at the top there so that will be good i think just like so and then we can tuck in our happy easter all right so what i'm going to do is i think i might even pop a dimensional under the top of the cross there and then under the bottom of the cross i'm just going to um glue that so i'll pop oops oh no dropped my dimensional there we go let's pop a dimensional under the top of the cross actually i'll take that out to do that and make sure i get that in the right spot better remove the backing that would help wouldn't it okay mifflin can hear you and is looking for you ah oh, <laughs> hey mifflin mifflin push 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 Puss, puss, puss. I do miss my kitty cats sometimes. Sometimes. I grew up with cats. All right, so there we go. So we've got the cross there. And for the bottom part of the cross, I'm just going to flip that over and sneak a little bit of glue just on here. I could just stick it on the bottom of the cross there. So I'm just putting a little bit of glue there at the bottom of the cross and then I'll flip that over make sure I've got that straight and then I'll just press that down there we go 
it is coming through a little bit just there so I'll just dab that with the, I probably should have put the glue on the um, wreath itself rather than on the um, cross but that's okay all good and now let's slip in our happy Easter so do we do it over or under hmm so many decisions today everybody isn't there do it partly over and partly under couldn't we have it coming out like that or well, then you don't see the cross part you want to see the cross we'd have that there like so and then our purple ribbon do, do, do. yep something like that so again I might just put a little bit of glue just let's put it here on our leaves to secure our sentiment which I prepared earlier and we'll tuck that in and just have that coming out there we want to be able to see the detail of the cross so I don't want to cover up the um, that part of the cross just there there we go and then we can just add our ribbon with a glue dot and then we can attach all of that to our I know that um, Tina Marie you wanted me to drape the ribbon but it kind of wasn't it was really hard to get it to sit properly so I think I'm just gonna put the purple ribbon I've still got the purple ribbon there but I think I'm just gonna pop it here under the sentiment um, just because it was it was really hard to kind of get it to sit right there when I was draping it and I think a bow doesn't look right on the cross mm, yeah no I don't I think the bow needs to go down here with the sentiment and have that coming off the bottom of the the sentiment now the other thing is too I didn't do any distressing Oh, I did distress the eggs, but I didn't distress the sentiment or the cross. But you could you could do some daubering on the um, sentiment and on the uh, sorry on the sentiment and on the cross as well, just to highlight those edges if you wanted to. Um, but I kind of, to be honest, it was an afterthought. <laughs> um, but I could have, yeah, I could have totally done that as well. There we go. yeah there we go okay so our wreath is done ready for our card let's leave that on there for the moment and now we have to decide about the base whether or not we're going to go with the neutral base or if we're just going to go with a white base let's just sit that back on there again and have a look so that does give us more of a neutral base so pretty oh, loving these colors sorry kathleen i know you don't like pastels <laughs> um but yeah I, i'm really liking how that's looking and it's ended up being my own project which is great i ended up not i got i did get some inspiration from other people but i ended up doing a bit of a mashup and then well i basically changed it up anyway really so yeah um okay bases let's check with white Amber suggested the white might look good just to help break up all the color so let's have a look at it on white because we do have the white in the wreath as well so that could be good actually that does look beautiful on the white what do you think it does really give it a lift doesn't it, it gives that purple a lift what do you think and then because we've got the white in there as well and a little bit of white in our sentiment what do you all think about that or what was the other colors um i think julie suggested some colors also see what purple posy well we've got purple posy on the top so i probably wouldn't put that on the base highland heather or even daffodil delight or balmy blue okay let's see i've got oh well, this is so saffron so saffron's in the eggs so i'm not so sure about the purple on so saffron though that might be a little bit too oh i don't know 
So many different colour combinations you could really do and get away with, I think, with this card. Let me just take my um, camera up a little bit and zoom out a bit. Just see if you can see that a bit better. So I think I was zoomed in a little bit too much. So that's with the So Saffron in the background. And again, we could put a strip of paper. We could either move that down and have that as a cent. Actually, I do like that just as a central focal rather than having that across the bottom as well. Yeah. I think I'll just move that down, have that in the middle. Um, so not so sure about that one. What about Barmy? We'll have a look at Barmy. Oops, there goes all my all my comments. There we go. Um, definitely center the wreath. Yep, I've decided on that. Yep. Um, Glenda said either would look okay. All right, and what was the other one? Julie suggested Barmy Blue. Balmy blue. I don't have a piece cut down, so it might be a bit hard to tell. On the balmy blue. Mm, not so sure about the balmy blue. I don't know. Let's cut down a piece of balmy blue real quick. I'll just cut a um, card base. Here's a balmy blue card base and we'll have a look at how that looks because we do have the blue in the eggs just not sure about that gorgeous grape sitting directly onto the blue I don't know might get away with it actually because we've got the blue in the eggs not sure I'll move that away whoops I don't know, what does everyone think? White, Renee says white, Megan says white, Amber says white, Jenny says white. Ah, oh, everyone says white. Well, majority. Majority is saying white. Okay. So let's put it on the white. It does give that a pop, doesn't it? Makes that purple really pop off the, the front. Okay, great. All right, we'll go with that. So we're centering that, not adding the ribbon at the bottom. Alrighty. So let's put some um, adhesive on the back of this one and we can pop that on our card front. I will actually use tear and tape just to make sure that it's not going to go anywhere because tear and tape is such a strong adhesive that I just want to make sure that everything is going to stay put. There we go. What's everybody's favorite adhesive? I think I've asked this question before actually. So if you're adhering card fronts, let me be more specific. If you're adhering card fronts, what is your favorite adhesive to use for attaching your card fronts? And I've got a little smudge of ink on this one, but that's not going to matter because I'm going to cover it up with my card front. There we go. Um, oh, Amber said, wow, she's surprised I'm using tear and tape. <laughs> yes, because I've been using a lot of stamp and seal lately, haven't I? Megan likes Tombow, Tina Marie likes Tear and Tape, Glenda likes Tombow. I used to always be um, solely a tape user. Ouch. Um, I mustn't press with that hand. I must press with this one. <laughs> um, yeah, I used to only ever use Tear and Tape and then I discovered... Um, Oh, and then a lot of demonstrators were using Tombow and I thought, oh, I'll give it a go. 
And so then I started using Tombow and then Stamp and Seal came along and I started using Stamp and Seal. But now I sort of, yeah, I use a bit of a combination of everything really. All right. So we've got all of that there ready to adhere down. Now, the next question is, do I pop the whole thing up on dimensionals or do I stick it flat? Mm. We do have dimension on the top there. So, and we've got a lot of dimension happening there with all these other bits and pieces popping through. So we could just adhere that flat which I think I might actually adhere it flat because we're adhering it onto um, an embossed surface. And so to use dimensionals might not adhere as well as with the glue. Um, and yeah, and we've got a lot of dimension happening on the top anyway. So let's just go with Tombow, if I can squeeze it enough to get some glue out. There we go. So we'll just add some Tombow. We want to use plenty so that this all stays in place. We'll add some to the bottom of the cross there as well. Okay, flip it over. And we want to make sure that our cross is straight, that our sentiment is not hanging off the side of the card and that the wreath is reasonably centered top to bottom that is there we go okay so let's press that all down nice and firmly now I've got sticky fingers thankfully I have a baby wipe right nearby and Megan says she likes the stamp and seal as well but just not used to it yet with the humidity oh yeah the humidity can affect the um, tape runners and it did definitely affect the snail. Um, yeah, so the snail adhesive was not as strong a adhesive, Megan, as the stamp, uh, the um, stamp and seal. The stamp and seal is much stronger. So you might find you have more luck with the um, the seal than you had with the snail. There we go. So I think. Oh, we don't have any bling yet. Wait, wait, wait. We need bling. Let's add. I think we're just going to add some rhinestones today we have got so much color already going on I mean I I do have these but I think they're too big for the design I don't want to take away from the design but I'll leave them out I think I will just use rhinestones so I've got a couple of rhinestone packets open there um, pearls would also look nice but I think the rhinestones will give a nice bling um, the pastel pearls Hmm, depends where I'm going to place them, really. Mm. Yeah, I think we'll go with plain rhinestones. We've got a lot of purple already happening on there. So I'll open up both of these because I want to use up these ones that I have. Rhinestones are my most used um, embellishment, in case you didn't already know that. I think I've mentioned that many times. <laughs> okay, so where are we going to put these rhinestones now? Let's pop a... I'm not even sure where I'm going to put them. Whoops. No idea. Might pop a large one down here and we'll pop a few smaller ones here and there, I think. You might pop another one there and let's do a small one. I think I'm just going to put them on the base actually. Um, oh, the car, the, oh, no worries, Julie. We, we did try the So Saffron and the Balmy Blue, um, but we ended up deciding on the white and it was unanimous in the end. Everybody really liked the white. So we could put one. Oh, no, I don't want to have the three in a row. Let's just pop one. Let's just pop it there. 
there we've got a little bit of bling you could add more bling if you wanted to um, but I think that's that's just really beautiful there we go so there is my first Easter card for the year corners of the card yes you could put them in the corners of the card too if you um, wanted to put them there that would look good as well um, beautiful so there we go so there is our beautiful Easter card using the arrange a wreath stamp set and the coordinating dies and remember that you can purchase these together as a bundle this one keeps coming off because i didn't stick it properly oh so i see why it's overlapping the i'm gonna have to put this on my magnetic sheets and actually trace the shape so i know which way to put it back on <laughs> so we've got the wreath builder dies with the arranger wreath stamp set you can purchase them together and save yourself 10 percent when you purchase them together as a bundle um, again if you missed the beginning of my live um, this uh, bundle is great for lots of different occasions because you can use it for um, valentine's day birthdays thanksgiving easter um, christmas and of course Oh, well, we did do Easter today. I think I already said that. Yes. So you can use it for lots of different occasions. Um, but yeah, just a beautiful, beautiful set. So I hope that you all really like my card today or the card that we created together. Thank you all so much for your help. Um, oh, great. We finished in time today, Megan. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your help. Thank you. You have a great week, a great week too. All right, so I will flip the camera back up now um, so that I can say goodbye to you face to face. So let me find my little washi tape. There it is. This one's losing its stick, actually. It keeps on falling off all the time. So we'll see if it'll stay on. So bear with me. I'll cover my camera and I'll flip that back to face viewing. Oh, that's squeaky. Let me unscrew that a little bit more. There we go. Front facing, I should have said, not front viewing. Front facing, I said the wrong thing. Okay, there we go. Great. Oh, I'm a little bit low. Let's go up a bit higher. Whoop. Take you up, going up. There we go. Good, stay still. There we go. Good, good, good. Okay, so let's get a shot of our little card here that we created together. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm so happy with this. It looks so pretty. And um, I love the colours and I love that we've got the cross in there and we've got the purple. Um, yeah, it's just a really beautiful card. And we've got the speckles in case you couldn't see down on the desktop hopefully you can see the speckles there on the eggs I think just that just adds a little touch you know an extra little touch to the eggs which is cute um, if you wanted to you could do use those stamped um, eggs that I did before as well which I didn't end up using but perhaps I can create another one and instead of using the die cut eggs I can use the stamped eggs well they'll still be die cut but they'll be stamped and die cut so yeah so that um, might make another nice Easter card as well so let me just remind you as well that this Thursday which will be the 25th as demonstrators we're able to see the brand new catalog in PDF format um, from the 1st of April as demonstrators will be able to order some of the products from the new annual catalog that is coming out if you would love to um, get a bargain make a saving and get a great discount a 20 percent 20 to 25 percent discount on all of your um crafting purchases then please have a chat with me i would love to talk to you about joining my team and becoming part of the paper craft gems which, which is the name of my team um, it's only 169 dollars to purchase the starter kit and you choose whatever products you would like to put in your starter kit you might even like to put in the products that i use today into your starter kit but you can actually choose up to $235 worth of product for that $169. Then you'll get all of your future orders um, or future products uh, for a 20% discount. 
over time you can build that up to 25% as well. There's so many other great perks and benefits of being a demonstrator, but if you would like more information about that, please send me a message and I would love to um, have a chat with you about that and I can even send you some information as well. So um, in saying that, I just wish you all a great week. Um, stay safe, everybody. I hope that you all stay safe from the floods and the rain. Be careful out on the roads. Take it easy. Um, take your time. Don't rush. Better to be late and get there safely than to not get there at all. So um, blessings to you all. And I look forward to seeing you all next Monday at four o'clock Australian Eastern. Well, will we still have daylight? Yes, we will still have daylight savings as of next week. And I think I think it finishes the weekend after that. But anyway. Um, Australian Eastern Time. Let me just say that. <laughs> All right, everyone. Until next week. Happy crafting. Bye.